Hello folks and welcome to the channel, welcome back. And work still continues on the TVR. I still have a lot of wrapping up things to do. I took the door back off to get it repainted in the paint boot and I'll show you that in a few minutes. I also repainted the bottom side of the, the body of the TVR in black. I think I like that. I put some stone guard up here and then the hinges of course, I actually glued them in place now, uh, as I mentioned it before. So yes, still a lot of work to be done. I also got some nice little parts from China and very cheap, like door handles and window winders uh, because mine are broken and we're missing on this TVR. So um, yeah, still a lot of small things to be done. So one of the things I ordered recently for very cheap prices are the window winders. And here you have those. They look quite all right. I mean, I think they are good, good enough, at least for the 10 pounds or 10 euros I paid for them but the interesting part is that in the back you can put an insert in and there's all kind of inserts you can put in and they range from square ones to star forms you name it there's a whole raft of them and see that is one of those inserts and here's another one a round one so you can put these in there to match your specific winding system uh, for your window and for the TVR this fits just perfect so yes this is very cheap stuff uh, there's no need to buy expensive stuff for that and it looks quite good and it's yeah it's quite all right so I'm going to put this onto the TVR I might actually polish it a bit more uh, because it's not really well polished but besides that you know this is pretty good stuff and you might have to tighten up some of these knobs and, and put some Loctite on but you know, for that price, you can't beat it. You might remember that we aligned the door before on the new door hinges and they seem to be working just fine and pretty good quality. I actually injected the Tech 7 glue on the top here with the, the nut is to fill up that hole. So now um, this side is ready and waiting to have its um, door back onto it, which I'm now going to spray in yellow. Now for the paint, I had to get uh, the paint sampled by the paint shop to match the color. So hopefully it will be a pretty close match. So while I was spraying this black side here, I added also a stone guard and this is a sticky tape, which is pretty rough. In fact, what it is, it's the anti-slip tape that you see sometimes on staircases. And here is that tape. And I think personally that this is a nice thing to use. It's very cheap. You can get it in most stores. It's pretty rough on the outside. Uh, so it's like abrasive paper almost. Uh, and on the back side uh, is adhesive, so you can stick it to whatever you want to stick it to. I've used this a lot on cars uh, because I think it looks, it looks good. But of course, that's a personal preference. Also, these door rubbers, um, you know, some reason they are too short, so I might have to replace them. Uh, and you can see it actually came loose, so I will probably have to re-glue all this or replace this complete door rubber uh, because the way it is right now is, is kind of, you know, not right. And then we have the issue with the bumpers. I remember that this car had these ugly rubber bumpers. And in fact, this bumper came off. You can see how it's been ripped apart and the metal part still sits on the car. So I will have to take this off and then get uh, new bumpers that would go on like this. So there's kind of all kind of bumpers you can buy, uh, but I'm gonna have a special video on the bumpers themselves. Uh, there's bumpers in polyester, there's bumpers in aluminum, there's bumpers in, that are chromed, and there are stainless steel um, bumpers, and they are quite expensive. So let's have a look on the door that we painted yesterday uh, with the base coat. I don't have a video on it, but I was a bit lazy. I, in fact, I also taped off the door handle, which I probably should have removed it before painting. But all right, it is what it is. I'm, sometimes I'm a bit of a lazy bum. So um, let's go and have a look at that door. Now, some of you might have seen my videos before on how to build your own paint boot. Well, this is the paint boot after a lot of paint jobs have been done. I have sanded the door with the grid 400 and then I applied a 1057R primer uh, from Chromax onto that. This is a pretty good product, but I always like to use Chromax. But of course, it's up to you what kind of paint system you like to use. So now uh, I'm going to sand it down again. 
And here is the door, uh, already been pre-painted in primer. Uh, this is a high-built primer. So you can see that there's already a nice gloss on this door and that's just the base paint. So if you paint it with the right viscosity and at the right temperature, you're gonna get this already, this kind of a finish. Now, I know some people paint straight onto this surfacer. I'm going to rub it down because I've seen a little area that I actually had forgotten. Uh, to correct a bit, there's two little holes here where the old mirror has been. Uh, this is where the new mirror is, so these have to stay open. And there's another little patch on the other side there that I have to sand down again. So I'm going to take the door off and I'm going to take it back outside and I'm going to sand it down again now, probably with an 800 to get it really smooth and then I will apply my final one stage paint and I want to make the point that in this case I'm not using a base coat and then the lacquer on top of it or a varnish as they call it uh, because this car is an old styled car it's been painted before with a one uh, type paint application so the paint so the color and the lacquer and the shine it is all in one paint so I'm going to paint it maybe with about two three coats of that and then I should have a pretty nice door hopefully it works out you never know now the good thing with that paint is if even if you have some little debris in it uh, little pieces of dust you can always sand it out and then polish it up and maybe i will have to show you that if i got some visitor that flies into it you never know all right so let's take it away and start sanding it it may not have been the best approach to hang it to hang the door like this uh, it might have been better on a stand but that's what I had available to me. So, all right, so what is, something is stuck here. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's go. So as you can see, the door is already pretty smooth, but I still need to correct some small areas. So I'm just gonna, very softly kind of kind of take off that cover here uh, of base paint and I'm gonna correct those little areas um, it's not a lot um, Now I'm going to use some very fine putty now from Chromax. Um, this is not intended to be applied for thick coats, but small coats, little unevenness, uh, that's, it's perfect for that. Don't use it if you have to fill up a big hole because that's not the purpose of that. All right. So that very soft body should now be dried up and I'm going to sand it with a grid 800. And in fact, I'm going to sand the whole door with a grid 800, but I will use some wet sanding for this. This is all sanded down. So now it's a matter of just wiping it clean. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to let it drip out and dry before we're going to paint it. Don't use normal napkins if you're going to dry this up. Uh, these are special napkins for paintwork. You can get those in your paint store. Because if you use normal napkins, often they have additives to it. And you don't want to have those on your paint panel or the panel you are about to paint. And then afterwards we wipe it one more time clean with um, thinner or the solvent, the one that you use to dilute your paint. So you re really get a nice clean surface. This is the SATA 5000 and I do recommend that you use a good quality uh, paint gun to have the good quality of the paint because you don't want to have 
orange skin or you don't want to have no drips so make sure you mix everything properly so a scale is always important uh, some of these cups are very important those are scaled cups so you know exactly what you need to do in terms of uh, fixing or mixing activator together with your paint um, and then maybe you have to have some thinner as well uh, so that all depends a little bit uh, on, on your specific paint product and for that you will find data sheets to mix it right. I have separate videos on how I paint with Chromax uh, if you want to see those so I'm not going to get into all these details but the good thing is actually I did find the paint for the TVR uh, based on a color matching with a a spectrograph um, because they had to measure it on the door. In fact, they had to take the door off and take it to the paint shop so they could scan it. Now, this ends up as a DAF trucking paint color. That was the nearest match we could find. So, this is about one liter, more than enough for that specific door. And it's again a Centauri from Chromax, and it's the 5035 kind of paint. So, if you need to know on how to uh, dilute it on how to put in the hardener then look that data sheet up on the internet and you'll find exactly on how to do that not a big deal all right so uh, this is for in about half an hour or so we're going to start painting I'm going to show you something else now um, which is actually the seat that I took out because I took the seats out of the car because my seat was a bit worn out uh, they were actually sagged through so the rubber inside was all kind of like you know, no more uh, absorbing, it was like flat. So therefore the whole thing was sagging through and the tissue started to rip a bit. Now I'm going to replace the seats later on this year in full, but I still wanted for this season to have this seat fixed. So what I did is I took all these rubbers off, which are in the back here like so. And then you have cross rubbers that are coming in from the top like so and they are weaved in and they are held in places with these small rods that go on hooks on the top and on the bottom so i took that off so i had access to the inner part of the seat and then i took off this piece here uh, which was actually sitting on top of that like so i took it off and then i had access to this kind of canvas and i could actually see inside that rubber foam that was there the one that was co completely uh, compressed and, and it was no elastic anymore and then i took some insulation foam and i decided uh, to stick it in there which i did actually and you can still see it i went made a few holes and i just filled it up all around completely inside so now you can feel I have a pretty sturdy bottom and it's not going to be as soft anymore. Uh, I still have the rubber foam inside, but it's not going to be as soft, but it's not going to come all the way through that it's going to rip the tissue uh, on the seat itself. So, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to put it back together and then um, that seat will be good for another time. So in some cases, filling up the back of your seat with this kind of foam uh, or glue, expandable glue, but don't go for the very expandable one, go for the very soft expandable foam. Uh, this isn't a lot. I use this actually for glue and this is actually glue. It works to fix your seats for a while. Of course, it is not like a new seat, but it works. So I'm going to put this back together and then we'll see how it goes. So uh, I'm going to start with this part here. I'm trying to get this nicely in place uh, where it's supposed to be. I think before initially there were plastic um, kind of washers on this, but I don't have those. They were gone already. So now I'll put the rod through it. And then you're going to place the rod behind the hook. Move this a bit like this. See the hole there? That's where you want to have it in. So it really fits nicely into it. It's not the most fun job upholstery. And now we do the bottom side exactly the same way, which is a bit more tough because you will have to pull on those elastic bands. All right, so this feels good. See, it's still soft on the top, 
but it's more filled because that's because of the polyterrain glue in the bottom. But now I can really sit on this and it's quite comfortable. So um, I'm going to clean up the seat completely. We're going to vacuum clean it, take care of this uh, tissue here and then we're going to put it back into the vehicle. And meanwhile we're going to continue on the door. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is to actually degrease uh, the door um, and then we are ready to paint it. Uh, to degrease it I'm just using my ordinary thinner that I use on my paint and I just wipe the door you know all along. Now that this is cleaned up, I'm going to use something else, a what they call a tag rag. It's a bit of a sticky piece of cloth and I will take up the last pieces of dust that could be on this door. And then we are ready to paint it. I will mix my paint in a few minutes and uh, I'm going to do it in a 1 to 3 ratio. So three parts of paint and one part of hardener. But of course that depends on paint to paint. That looks quite all right. There's almost no dust or any particles on it. I have a nice gloss. You can actually see the line uh, of the light in the paint and the line should be straight. They should not be wobbly. If it is or if it's like pitted then you know the paint surface isn't right. And I have no orange peel. Uh, that's important or no drips. So uh, I think this will be looking quite all right. I'm going to let it dry now overnight at around 35-40 degrees centigrade and then probably Saturday I will mount the door so it's even a bit harder. It's time for the bumpers because the bumpers on the TVR are in a very bad shape. They are ripped apart and in fact the metal bar inside is so rusted that parts fall out. You see that? I can actually pull it open and inside it's all rust. So I will have to replace them and put some new ones up. See this? That's why you have the metal bar inside and this is all rusted away. It's still stuck partially on the rubber. Partially not. Look how bad that is. So we have to remove all this and then put some new bumpers up of some sort. I already removed one bumper in the front and one bumper in the back, but I'm going to show you the other side once I'm going to remove it. In essence, I have just been grinding off the, the nuts or the bolts that were holding it and there's only two holes in it and then I cleaned it up a bit because it was pretty dirty. The polyester is still in a good shape. If it was not then I would have to correct that polyester. In the rear I already pulled off uh, the bumper and you can still see the metal bracket. This one 
is still solid, but it's so pitted. So these are the bolts that I need to grind off uh, on both sides. So, and just like on the right hand front, I already cleaned it up. Uh, what you can see here is that the holes in the polyester are a bit bigger, but there's a huge big washer in the back. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Maybe I will fill these holes up with some polyester first, get it a bit enforced, or just put a metal plate in the back. Different options. I placed the cloth up just to protect the paintwork a little bit for the eventual sparks that will come off this because I'm sure we'll have some sparks coming off. So I'm going to use a small cutting disc uh, to get this off and then we'll see how it Well, that's loose. And now we're going to cut off the second one. Exactly the same way. All right. And all what's left now is some debris and rust, which we can take off. Now here the holes are a bit smaller than on the other side, um, but there is a crack. I still think I will place a big bar in the middle to hold it on a longer distance. So now let's have a look on the front one. So the way these bumpers are mounted is that there is a bolt from the inside of the shell going into the bumper. So the nut is welded onto the metal part of the bumper. Uh, so you have to undo it from the back, but of course, with uh, rusted bumpers like this, that isn't going to work too well. So I'm going to try to get them off in a different way by carefully peeling them off if I can. I might not be able to all the way, but whatever I can, I'll do it. Because I only need to get to those bolts to grind them off. And I think I got the first one already here. So in my case, I'm doing a destructive removal of these bumpers. Of course, if you want to keep yours and they're still in good shape, you just want to take them off, then you unbolt them from the back. But in this case, uh, it's very hard to unbolt them because it's, everything is so rusted up that it's easier to remove the bumper where I can from the front and then just grind the nuts off like you've seen me doing it. Now, this one is the only one which is a bit more difficult to get off, so it's a bit in a better state, I guess, the rubber. So that's why I use a hacksaw to get a, a cut in it, and now we'll try to prime that open. Because all I need to do is get to that nut. And once I'm at the nut, I can do whatever I need to do. Here we go, and here is the nut. That's the one I need to cut off, and nothing more than that. Not much is left of the bolt, it's one big puddle of rust, so you can imagine trying to remove the bolt from the back. It's practically impossible, so I had to use a destructive way of doing it. So let me grind this off and then everything should come off. So let's see if we can knock this bolt out back in. All right, with the bumpers removed, so now time to clean that up a bit. Years of debris and dirt is on it. All four old bumpers are off. I cleaned up the surfaces and now we are about ready to install new ones. Now the question is, what are we going to install? Are we going to install polyester models? And I know some folks create those. Am I going to install a chrome bumper? Uh, that's pretty nice. Or will I install a polished stainless steel bumper or an aluminum bumper? The rubber bumpers you can't get anymore, so that's going to be impossible unless you get a second-hand uh, rubber bumper, but it's going to be suffering from the same problems of rust as you've seen. I've been looking around to find some decent bumpers and there's plenty of websites that sell them. Unfortunately, you can't see always the quality of them. Uh, I've seen them ranging from 1,600 euros down to 800 euros. Uh, and at the end, um, I decided to go to Bumper World in the Netherlands. 
and I bought the complete set and they arrive very nicely packed as you can see very well protected this is kind of like soft material very well wrapped up uh, in a very great box um, so there's no damage that can happen to it and when you unpack them that's how they look like I mean look how nice that is really shiny uh, this is polished um, stainless steel and then the inside they are nicely black they have nicely welded in rosettes uh, or attachments so you can bolt them down properly and they actually come with inox bolts as well so the quality of these is really amazing um, really good and guess what I bought those in the Netherlands uh, as I said, Bumper World, I called the guys, I said, like, listen, I'm looking for good quality bumpers. I don't want to have junk. Um, tell me what you have. And I said, I've seen them on other websites as well, and they all look the same on the pictures, but are they the same? And the guy said, no, they are not the same. The ones that we are selling, it's really good quality. And I have to agree because even on the edges here, I mean, this is so nicely made. Uh, and you'll see a close-up soon, uh, as as soon as it's on the car. Uh, so I decided to buy them, and about three days later, I had it for about 825 euros, I think. Well, I know it's a lot of money for four bumpers, but it will make the car look so much better. So if you can afford it, get stainless steel bumpers. Shop around and uh, check these guys out. Um, Bumper World in the Netherlands. Uh, I'll put the link up, not that I'm going to make a commercial for them. Of course, I'll leave that up to you to decide where you want to buy, of course. Anyhow, um, I'm going to start preparing these bumpers now uh, to put them on the car. That is not all that hard. At the end of the day, it's just bolting them down with the bolts. Uh, it may be that for your car, um, the, it might be a little offset because TVRs were not always exactly the same. So you may you might have to make some small adaptations. You might wonder why I have these uh, stickers on here. Well, I did those to check out uh, the alignment of the holes for the bolts. You know, that's easy stuff. Now, one more thing I'm gonna say, before I'm gonna put the bumpers up, I will put a rubber spacer up um, on those areas where the bumpers meet the polyester. So I just did a trial fit of one bumper, and what I can tell already is that this is an issue right here. This bumper comes way too high up. It shouldn't be that high up. I also know why, and I'm going to show it to you in a few seconds, because the hole inside where the bolt goes in is offset. Um, and also at the same time, I'm having an issue here on the side uh, to put the bolt in. That I could correct by making a new hole in the polyester body. But I'm not going to do this. So um, we're going to adjust these bumpers. So what I've done here is just to show you the line with the tape. So this is the center of the front hole and then you can see the line going back to the side, uh, to the center of that hole. And as you can see, this is pretty much a straight line. There is no real offset between those two holes. So uh, this is the old metal bar that was inside the rubber bumpers. So I'm just going to put that in there temporarily to show you. And then you see that this hole fits in here, right? So now we have a good fit. Now you can see that on this bar, those two holes are on the same height. Nothing changes. The offset is about the same as this offset here. So this is what I need to now create inside the new bumpers. Here is the bumper, the new one. You can see the hole right there. This is exactly in the middle. That one is really having an offset. So if I put my old metal bar in there, and luckily I kept it, you can see, if I make it fit here, on this side, something like this, then I will have to drill another hole there to make it fit. So that's going to be the job for tomorrow, and we will have to drill it more or less right there in the middle, so we have the same offset from the top of the bumper to the bar then on this side. Now the way I'm going to do this is by drilling a hole in here then welding a nut on the back. So I'm going to drill the hole a bit bigger, put the nut in, uh, in the back, lock it in place with some tags by welding and then um, it should be good.